Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha. Today, I have the very first Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel review for you. This is very exciting. So I went to my local Toys R Us and they had a whole ton of brand new Power Rangers Super Ninja Steel stuff. The show doesn't premiere until next year, but this is around the time of the year that Toys R Us stores start to get new merchandise and this is really exciting. So I did a Ranger vlog showing all the new toys that I picked up and I asked you what you wanted to see first. Uh, there are many different suggestions, but most of you seem to want the Lion Fire Morpher first. So that's what I'm doing. Here it is right here, the brand new Morpher. Um, so I don't remember this being a full Morpher on the show. I think this this piece, I remember, was like an attachment to the sword and that sort of thing. But they've turned it into this sort of toy Morpher and given it the ability to fire darts and stuff. So we'll see how it is. But here is the brand new packaging style for Power Ranger Super Ninja Steel. We've got kind of the black box, really slick looking product image there. Power Ranger Lightning Bolt, very classic there in red. Um, and then you have the Lion Fire uh, Red Ranger right there, which looks really cool. Uh, just the way they did this packaging. I really dig it. Uh, my one minor gripe is the the weird part about how the Super Ninja Steel logo is split off. Like usually you have your full Power Ranger Super Ninja Steel or whatever the season's logo is, but they put like Power Rangers up there and then Super Ninja Steel. So I'm guessing they're trying to keep things more consistent. Maybe the Legacy line I think is gonna have similar packaging. So everything is just branded. Saban's Power Rangers, and then you have like a specific logo right there. So this just looks slightly odd by itself without Power Rangers, but you know, minor, minor little thing. But anyways, also new to the packaging style is it actually tells you what it includes right on the box. So you have um, kind of like the, the Morpher piece, the little attachment that goes onto it, the red lion piece, uh, two darts and a power star. So that's actually really neat. It's a nice little touch to show you right on front of the box what it actually includes. Uh, and there's the power star right there as well. So lion fire Morpher, uh, it says dart launch, ninja action sounds, ninja stars activation. The side of the box, very simplistic looking, a small little image of the item there. And on the other side, there's nothing. It just says lion fire Morpher. So very simple style packaging, but it looks really slick. Um, and then the back of the box, uh, no more images from the show because a lot of the previous toys had like a show image right here and then more stuff on the right. They've taken that away and it's simply focusing on the toy. Morph in battle like a Power Ranger uh, launches twin darts combines with the Lion Fire Blade. Now, uh, a word of, of notice, the Lion Fire Blade, the toy is actually called the uh, Superstar Blade. So they've kind of changed the name or whatever. So I will be reviewing this in the future, but just an FYI, if you're looking, where's the Lion Fire Blade? I don't see it in stores. It's actually just the Superstar Blade. Uh, spin to activate sounds. Got ninja action sounds and additional role play products available. So anyways, here it is guys, the first ever Super Ninja Steel toy that I'm reviewing. So without further ado, let's get this open and take a look. All right, so I got the Lion Fire Morpher out of the packaging. Here it is. Um, so one note that I want to mention, and I want it to relate to the packaging, the packaging is actually very misleading. You see that Power Star? That Power Star actually looks pretty decent because look, it looks like it's molded and it looks like it's almost plastic, but even if it's foam, it's got like molded design, right? Well, guess what? Here's the Power Star that it actually comes with. Nope, no molded design at all. That is... False advertising right there. So Bandai, that's really messed up. So in case you were you were wondering, is Bandai gonna do better with the Power Stars and Super Ninja Steel? Uh, looks like no, they are not. This is pretty terrible. So um, Bandai, not really happy with that. Um, so keep that in mind if you're looking at the box, that is false advertising right there. So um, that is one negative to this toy. So pretty cheap Power, power Star, as always, nothing has changed with Super Ninja Steel. Um, it's just a sticker and a cheap little foam with no design on it here. Now the Power Star packs appear to have some sorts of designs, but that's for another review. But the ones that come with the toys, pretty cheap. So before I get to the Lion Fire Morpher, I have um, the regular Morpher right here, and I want to see the sound that it plays with the Morpher. So here we go. Lion Fire Armor Star. All right, here we go. There you go. So that is the 
Lionfire Armor Star is the official name of this power star. So anyways, here is the Lionfire Morpher. So uh, real quick, I do want to mention that this thing actually comes in a couple pieces uh, in the box. So it comes in multiple pieces. In fact, there's these two little tabs that are in the back here um, and they're kind of like attached like this in the packaging um, and you have to sort of twist off the tabs and take these off. So these two little plastic tabs. So it's kind of interesting, but basically you have your main base right here. All right. And that has all the electronics, your on off switch, um, all of that right here. This is the lever that uh, shoots the darts as well. So actually, let me take these out. But these are the darts. Um, it does come with two darts. And these are the same darts that came with uh, the Rockstorm Guitar Blaster as well. Um, so they're kind of keeping it consistent, which is nice. So if you have multiple Ninja Steel, Super Ninja Steel toys, you have that. But here's the main base. Uh, pretty basic, not much to it. There is one little button right here which I'll, I'll get to a little bit later. And then you have the handle. And so the way the handle attaches is it basically attaches so that the, the grip is facing outwards towards where the darts would go like that. So it doesn't go like this, it goes like this. And so you just kind of slide it in here, but it's not gonna click into place because you'll see there's a little tab in place. So what you have to do is you actually have to twist this so the tab, as you can see, moves out the way. So I'm gonna kind of um, hold this right here twist the tab and then I can push down and then it lets me click into place. So if I want to take it out, I just twist it again and then it can pop right out. So very easy to take on and off. So that's kind of nice um, to have right there in case you wanted to, to do that. So what does this thing do? Well, there's a couple of different things that it can do. So before I even turn this thing on, I want to mention uh, the darts. So let's get that gimmick out of the way. You put in the darts and basically this is where it gets a little challenging. Um, and so this is where you can hold it. Now, myself, I'm an adult, right? The toys are not designed for me. It hurts my hand uh, to hold it like this. Kids, it may be fine, but for an adult, for any collectors out there, this is gonna hurt your hand. It's tiny, it's not a, a big grip. Um, this overall piece is kind of big, but this, this is hurting me right there to do that. And especially because in order to pull this, like, you can't just pull it. Like, look, you have to put force. Yeah, hold on. There we go. You put a decent amount of force, then it pops open. So if I'm doing this and I'm putting force on it, it is hurting me in right there. So that's why when I show you my review, it's designed to be like this and you pull it like that and then it should work. Um, but for me, I'm gonna have to take it off and do that to show you for the review. I have a feeling this is gonna be really difficult for kids. I think this is actually really hard to pull. Even if they can hold this properly, they're gonna be pulling really hard on it and I don't know how well that's gonna last. So keep that in mind. Now, to launch the darts, now that this is pulled, you see it clicked into place and it's stuck outwards. Now I can push this button to fire the darts. So let me just uh, move this backwards and then push the button and Oh, whoops, <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't go very far. <laughs> Let me do this again. Yeah, okay, ready? Now let's do this, and... Uh, you see, it's not super great. Like, this one didn't really fire that well. Um, you kind of have to sort of point it downwards a little bit, too. Um, so let me do that, point it down, and then... Well, that didn't work either. So, it was working better the last few times I did this. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, it's not really firing the darts right now. So that's, it, it, I did, it did work better when I did this off camera, but for some reason right now, it's not working so well. So it's gonna be a little hit or miss, I will say. The, the dart firing mechanic is not super great and I feel like they could have done a better job of this. And especially, the reason I say that, even if you're one of the people that's like, I don't care about shooting the darts, this is how you actually activate a bunch of the sounds that the Morpher makes. This Morpher actually makes a lot more sounds than I thought it would. Um, but you have to pull this lever to activate a bunch of the sounds. So that's one downside there. So, what else does this thing do? Well, let's turn this thing on first of all. All right, so it makes some sounds there. Um, and whether you put the darts in or not, it doesn't matter, but basically, um, what I will say is there's no button or anything like that. One way to trigger sounds is with the lever. So if I pull the lever and push the button. It makes that sound, the lion roaring and everything. And there's a couple of different sounds that it will do. So I'll do it again. Again. So I think that's all of them. 
It's just gonna kind of cycle through the sounds and play them randomly. So yeah, you get the idea. Those are the main sounds there. Now, one of the other sounds is you can attach this piece right here. So as you can see, it's kind of got this little bit of a see-through plastic right here with the yellow uh, tint and everything. And this thing does spin. This thing also moves open, but this is, I think, attached to the sword. So for the purposes of this toy, it actually stays closed flat like that. And this thing spins. There's no lights or sounds or electronics on this piece alone, but when it attaches here, um, there will be a little bit. So when you attach it, you click into place, nothing. No sound, lights, I feel like that's a missed opportunity. And by the way, I feel like this thing, I was waiting for this thing to light up. So at first I was like, wait, it's not doing anything? It just, I don't know, it seems like it would. I guess this is when you attach it to the sword, the lights will go through here and that'll make more sense. But it just seems a little odd on this toy alone. So the main thing is this thing spins and it plays a sound, so. And that's it. That's that's the special sound. I mean, it's kind of neat, I guess, but that's it. I mean, if I were to, to do this again with the darts and fire it, It's the same sounds that you heard before that I was gonna cycle through. So whether this is attached or not, it seems to be the same sounds. So real quick before I take this thing off, I just wanna show you um, just what it looks like with it on because this is sort of what it's supposed to be. And I think the design, the overall design is pretty neat. Um, you know, obviously there's not too much paint on this black base down here. So I feel like they could have done more with it or something. But overall, like the design is neat. I think it's a really unique way of, uh, of handling this for sure. And, um, and turning it into a morpher, I, I think it's really interesting. Um, but I kind of wish there was a little bit more when you attached this big main piece. You know what I mean? Like when you attach the power star, there's actually a bunch of sounds that it makes. So I feel like they should have done more with this versus the little power stars, but that's just me. So to detach it, you just hold down this little tab on both sides and just pull it off. So again, to attach it, or detach, no sounds at all, kind of a missed opportunity. A lot of the sounds come from attaching a power star, but you'll see when you attach a power star, it looks very plain because it's all black and then a tiny little power star, which is why I, f I wish they would have flipped it and done a lot more sounds when you attach this versus a power star. Also, it does not matter which power star you attach because the sounds come from when you take the power star on or off. Spinning it does nothing. Uh, so it does not matter which power star you use on here. Uh, the only thing that matters is that there is a power star just sitting on there. So let's take a look at all those sounds. So I'm gonna attach this one here. One second, whoops. So it was a lion roaring. Now, if I were to detach it and attach it, it would play a different sound. And detach it, attach it, a different sound. So there's a bunch of different sounds. And you'll see, I spin this, it does nothing. So kind of a missed opportunity there. Um, Especially because, like, that looks so lame, in my opinion. Just so tiny little Power Star on this big black base that's not very painted. I don't know. It's kind of, kind of, eh. You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, but anyway, so, with the Power Star attached, I can actually pull the lever and it's going to make some different sounds. So let's do that. I should take the darts out because they're not going to work very well. So it kind of cycles through a couple sounds. It's a little random, I think. So those are the different sounds that it makes. Now, if I take it off and put it back on, we're gonna get a different sound. Oh, actually, that was the lion roaring again. Hold on. Yeah, so let's do it again. So there you go. You kind of have like a, an, a car sound or something. So when you pull the trigger, you're gonna get a bunch of different car-related sounds. So it basically cycles through three different sounds. And then here's the third. You got it, so take it off, attach it again. Got a different sound, so now pull the trigger again. 
I'm trying to like not hurt my hand and do this, but it's really difficult. Okay, take it off, attach it. There's an elephant. You can pull the trigger and push the button. There you go. So a couple of random sounds that it goes through. As you can see, so. So, there we go. I don't know what that was, but that's a sound. <laughs> All right. So there's a lot of different modes. So every time you detach the power star and attach it, it's like a new mode, different sound, and then there's like about three sounds that this thing triggers with each mode. So it's kind of neat. This is really hurting my hand. And then we're back to the lion with the previous sounds that we had before. So it's kind of neat because every time you attach the power star again, you're in the different modes, like there's the car, another one, you know, um, so animal sounds. So you get into different modes with that. So there's actually a lot more different sounds than I would have thought because, you know, you get a unique sound each time you put the Power Star on, about five or six different modes. Each one has about three sounds that it plays. You know, so you get at least 15 sounds that way, plus the, the ones without putting a power star triggering this thing, and then the, the one sound from spinning this as well. So at least 20 something different sounds that you get with this morpher, which is a lot more than I was expecting. I guess then again, it is a morpher, and morphers tend to have a decent amount of sounds, but not always. Not always. So it's a pleasant surprise that it does. Um, I just, my gripe is, I don't know if you can see, my hand is a little red around the side, but that's just me. I'm not, I'm not a kid. This is not what, um, the toy is not designed for me. That being said, I feel like this is going to take, let me turn this thing off. Quiet. There we go. Uh, it's going to take a decent amount of effort for a kid to be able to keep pulling this thing and, and do it. And I don't know how long that, like, if it's going to last very well. So that's kind of a, um, one downside of this toy. So keep that in mind. Uh, I also kind of wish that, you know, I know this thing plays a decent amount of sounds when you put power stars on it, but it doesn't look that great with a power star on it. When you attach this, it looks much better, but this doesn't do much except when you spin it. That's it. Just, you know, the one sound that it does there. Like, that's very underwhelming for the big piece right here. The main piece of the morpher doesn't do as much. So, um, the darts don't really even fire that well either. So that's kind of, you know, unfortunate. Like, I fired it. It didn't even... One went like that and one kind of just fell. So, I don't know. Honestly... Lion Fire Morpher for me is, 
you know, if, if really all you care about is a lot of different sounds, that's then it's pretty decent, I guess. Uh, the design is okay, like with this attached to it, it's pretty neat. But when you get down to the, the functionality of it in terms of the gimmick of firing the darts and the way that it's held as a morpher, that's kind of where it fails. So this is really gonna be uh, a hit or miss for, for some people. I think if you really like the design of it and you like all the different sounds that it makes, then you'll enjoy it. But if you're look if you were looking for a, um, a cool morpher to, to hold and be able to um, use the darts and, and mess with that way, it's not going to be as great of a toy. So um, I, I kind of have mixed opinions on the Lion Fire Morpher, to be honest. I, I will say that it's um, in some ways better, and in some like I feel like it has more sounds than I would have thought, um, and it looks really cool, like with this attached. But the, the downsides being, I, I felt like, you know, it should have had maybe some lights or something a bit more. And the way that the sounds are activated with the Power Star on off like that is just kind of underwhelming. So um, I feel like it could have been designed differently as a toy, but the overall look and feel um, is kind of interesting. So again, kind of a, a hit or miss for the, the Lion Fire Morpher. And of course, false advertising with the Power Star. So the Power Star is pretty cheap, just like they, they have been. So that's kind of unfortunate. But anyways, that's that. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the Lion Fire Morpher. Um, and if you want to see more Super Ninja Steel reviews, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will See you later. Now one of the other main features of the Lion Fire Morpher is the fact that it does combine with the Superstar Blade uh, available separately right here, or as the back of the packaging calls it, the Lion Fire Blade. Um, so if you want to see what it does with this, stay tuned because that will be the next item that I review, the Superstar Blade, and we'll take a look at the functionality that it has in the Morpher. Looks like it has battle SFX and, and things like that, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments section below what you think as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later.